what Rory Keith and John's. Um, I think I think he's I think he's wrong. I think it's going to go towards. Um, I don't think it's going to be this high quality kind of only professional thing. I think it's going to go. It's all going to be kind of in the control of the makers of it. So I wonder if Ardman or Endemol one day will have their own iPlayer and it, it, the BBC. We won't go through BBC. It will kind of they won't go through the ITV. It'll be the people making it and then putting on their own website and and selling it through there. Will that happen one day? Well, what's weird about the internet is that it, although it's the, kind of the most diverse creation, actually it's incredibly difficult to get visibility on it, which is why I think brands like YouTube and iPlayer, I think at times 5% of all internet traffic globally is iPlayer. And those brands are huge, and not only those particular brands, but I suppose distribution mechanisms. The, the reason why TV is becoming outmoded is because the broadcasters no longer have control over the revenues which drive commercial content. Uh, people like Bebo, MySpace, and they are they're now broadcasters right, which rival um, the traditional broadcasters, which we all know. And people like Google could quite happily kick most of them into touch quite quickly. Um, those, those people will start to command, they'll start to attract content and they'll start to commission content and people will find a place for, for that content to be there. So I think it will become very, very democratic, but I suppose the biggest shake-up of television as such is that the, the concept of television will cease to exist and broadcasting platforms will become much more prolific and the ones which are most visible will be the most successful. Mark, I haven't asked you because I wasn't quite sure how to pull you into that, but what do you feel, either personally or from your southwest screen position? I think that there's the, the problem with the quote is that um, it states the blindingly obvious, and that the, the breakdown of the, the economic model of the TV means that cheap and democratic, if you're basing your, your model on advertising, is where you have to go. Um, but it doesn't mean it's not professional, and professional doesn't mean something. Uh, but I think to pick up Gavin's point, cheap and democratic is a much, much more interesting concept because now the means of production and the means of distribution uh, are well within the reach of all of us. You know, we've probably all got a, a machine in our pocket where we could make, which we could make a film uh, and put it on the internet uh, tonight. And I think that's the, the massive change, the democratisation of your ability to express yourself and the democratisation of your ability to throw your... Uh, to throw your means of expression out there. We're just talking about um, a broadband TV station called Chew TV, which I'm involved with, but YouTube's the same. Someone was talking to me about a filmmaker that they thought was interesting, uh, and I looked him up on YouTube, and he had 40 films up there, um, and five short documentaries about Stokes Crofts in Bristol, I thought they were absolutely fantastic. And I think that's, that's the major change. Rory Kettner Jones talking about TV, but increasingly, um, you don't need TV to express yourself or to make yourself heard. Well, like Gavin's right about the brand, you, you know, there's a lot of noise, you've got to make yourself, but, but we, are, we have the ability to do that now. So anyone in the audience, it, um, I feel that it's starting to move on to issues that might affect young people that are looking at making films and, and entering the industry. So does anyone, Club Flix or otherwise, want to ask a question at this stage? As a sort of young filmmaker, well, what are the routes of progression uh, for young people in the industry? And, what are your views on the sort of choice to go to university or to not and go straight into get, getting a work experience? Do you, do you uh, when, when, you're looking, when you're looking to employ someone, do you look for a, a degree um, or do you look for both? And what are your... Or do you look on YouTube to see how many yeah, films they've exactly. made? Yeah. Um, as employers, I guess, um, you two again could could be in a good position to answer. I guess it depends on what it is that you're looking for someone to do. Um, it's weird. On one, one of the biggest kind of compliments and one of, the, one of the most advantageous things to have is enthusiasm, really. It's like 60% of the job is, is enthusiasm. So um, having a kind of CV which demonstrates what you've done previously is really, really important. But there's also a kind of flip problem with that which is people who come into the industry wanting to sort of sit down and multi-camera direct, who actually you kind of feel like you have to do the, go through the process before you can earn the right to do that. And there's the iceberg syndrome. It's like you come out of college thinking you know it all, and actually you don't know 80% of it. And so it's better to just keep your head down for a bit, learn on the job, runners, kind of apprenticeships or whatever. This is from a TV perspective. I, I uh, don't work in film. Um, 
But ultimately, being employable is mostly down to, I mean, obviously there's a core skill base which you, you require, but mostly it's enthusiasm and personability. You know, I mean, if, if you want to work with someone and they're enthusiastic for what you do, that goes most of the way, you know, most of the other stuff you pick up on the job. Yeah, I'd say the same. I think it's interesting, you know, we are, we're look, in the animation sector, we're looking at training skills um, in this country for a lot of good reasons. And for us, you're looking for exactly that, a really good, really good attitude. Uh, there is a real danger in this country that we come out of media court and say, I want to be a director. And we'll say, no, you don't. You don't want to be a director. You don't want to be a director for at least probably four or five years in any meaningful sense. And in terms of, say, say for example, directing an animated feature film, you won't get, you won't get to that stage for about a decade. That's just the, and it's not, it's not because there aren't any, any career paths there. The time it takes to understand what that means, that you're going to have to lead a team of 150, 200 people somehow, probably with somebody other, that, that team leading thing is crucial. And what we want uh, are people who understand what it is that's needed of them in the role they're put into, understand where that fits into the whole kind of what we call like a production pipeline, whether it's live action or animation, or whatever, that they're going to be a critical cog in a bigger machine, but Nevertheless, they're going to be a, a, a cog, but it's, it's an important one. They need to be good team players. Um, learn a lot on the job. And it, it's kind of interesting because we look at, fine enough, French and German students, graduates, a lot for recruiting. And one of the things that they do in their colleges is a lot more teamwork. And, you, you know, there'll be teams of five or six. They all kind of shuffle around roles. They all understand each other's what will become their specialities but they do a lot more teamwork. They're working like a small film crew a lot more during their, what will be a four or five year course. And that turns them into a different sort of person. They fit in. We just pulled in a girl from Germany who's fantastic, slotted straight into our system because she's, she's done it before at college. She's got very, she's very talented. She knows what she's doing and, and can see that on her reel. But more important than that is actually she knows, understands the pipeline, understands what's upstream of her, what's downstream of her, and what she's got to do. Um, and that you get, you get that through experience. Some colleges here are better than others. Um, I'm not going to name names in terms of what we do. Um, and the best thing you can do, you know, a media degree, what's a media degree worth? Mm. It's worth a lot if you really, really work hard and exploit the opportunities that are given to you. The worst thing that we see is people that go to university and basically party for the first year. When in fact, those two or three years, you're never going to get them back. And it's a phenomenal opportunity to really work out what you want to do. I mean, I was, I was for, I'm, you know, used to do a lot of camera work. And I actually spent a lot of my time at, at university doing theatre lighting. Places like this, I was really into lighting. Um, not on my course, I, I got a photography degree. And, but I just used that time, uh, did quite a lot of audio stuff in that time as well. And it just, it was just... The stuff was there, the kit was there, we could do it. It was fantastic. Throw yourself at it. Because those skills and understanding, and then the joy of that was I was working to a director. I was having to take a brief, understand what he wanted from the mood of the scene. All that bode really, really well for where actually when we got into doing what we were doing, which was actually model animation, but lighting scenes to a mood to a director's brief. Learning how to take a brief, give a brief. All those things are really critical. Now, you, you can do that at college if it's arranged, or you can make it so if it's not arranged with your mates. Uh, but that, and you probably say the same, that team spirit and understanding what a brief is and why, why you're given that instruction, even though you may not agree with it, there's a very good reason why you're being asked to do it and where it fits in. Whether you should get a job at, in a production company or rather go to university, I'd say actually no. I'd say go to university, explore it to the hilt, Make yourself stand out above the crowd as much as you can. Know what you want to do, uh, and have a basically have a get a skill out of it somewhere that is that you're passionate about. There are four thousand other people trying to get that job, whatever the figure is. So how do you stand out in the crowd? How do you know I'm the, you're, I'm the person who really what we want to do that job? It's a very very crowded market out there. I think it very much depends on what kind of films you make and, and, and to me that sounds quite, sounds like a really hard slog and it doesn't feel like 